Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 20th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have another diary from one of our undergraduate interns, Rafael Larias, is in our BAX program. And well, he's looking at an old favorite and that's the Mirai botnet. The Mirai botnet originally developed in 2016 has been taken down multiple times. The original authors have been arrested and convicted, if I remember uh, correctly. But truth being told, Mirai is not just one botnet. It's now a huge family of botnets that all have their own little quirks, their own exploits. This particular one has a couple of relatively recent exploits from 2023 that uh, Raphael spotted in this botnet. Other than that, what really sort of uh, makes Mirai Mirai, in my opinion, is that it has this very efficient SSH brute force uh, engine and Telnet brute force engine. And then also that it does use this echo trick uh, to then transfer binaries uh, to the vulnerable uh, system. These are sort of, in my opinion at least, some of the key properties that sort of identify Mirai. Others may have a little bit other opinions about this. And of course, sometimes you now also see some of the members of that family being called by their own and different names. And last week I talked about the key trap vulnerability. That's the DNS sec vulnerability that allows you to shut down many popular bind and unbound resolvers. Thanks to researchers Tepe Fukuda, we now have a proof of concept exploit that has been made public as a series of Docker containers in GitHub. The real critical part of the exploit, if you don't want to look up all of the uh, Docker containers and set them all up, uh, is the a.test.zone file. That's a zone file with the exploit DNS uh, key records that will trigger the vulnerability. So all an attacker needs to do is deploy a DNS zone with this particular test data, digitally sign it with the key that's also in the GitHub repository, and then trick victims into sending DNS requests, which could be as simple as sending some spam or such and getting the email server when they're doing their spam checks to resolve domains that are, for example, in the from address. There are some problems in information security that at first appear simple, but then as you look at them closer, they turn out to be remarkably difficult. And one of these problems is identifying file types. Simplicity speaking, there are well, very old and well-established libraries like uh, LibMagic that will allow you to identify files based on the header. But turns out that this is, uh, well, uh, rather dangerous in some cases. And there are these polyglot files and such that may be identified as different file types depending on what software you're using. Google now open sourced their own internal tool to identify uh, file types. It's an AI powered file type identification system called Magica. I guess a little bit sort of based on that LibMagic idea. Haven't had a chance to play with it yet, uh, but uh, definitely sounds interesting. And if you in particular need to allow users to upload files to a system, it may be worthwhile to experiment with this at, as at least sort of an additional layer of security to make sure that you identify file types correctly. Let me have an interesting blog post. Not sure how serious it is, but it sort of combines some of my favorite things, the NTP protocol and web applications. Essentially, what the blog post here by Tax Ships on Fire 
is uh, talking about is how unsynchronized clocks can lead to some unpredictable consequences if you're not doing your HTTP caching headers correctly. Problem that you're trying to avoid here is that sensitive content is being cached. Sometimes this is sort of done with expires headers, basically telling the system when certain data expires. Well, what this uh, blog post really about is that actually realistic clock drifts of a few seconds can lead to unintentional caching of HTTP responses if you're using the wrong headers. Good little read. Like I said, not I think it's super serious, but something to keep in mind to make sure you get your cache headers correctly. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.